54 days to the Kentucky Derby and a break in between the races. Let's do this. Trust the Profits is proud to be sponsored by Game of Silks. Go to silks.io to get in the game. Real ownership, real races, real rewards. Trust the profits. It's the formula here. Yes, we'll be doing a Kentucky Derby talk. We've been going through a lot of full field rundowns. I haven't had a chance to just sit back with a cup of coffee and think about what the Kentucky Derby looks like. Uh, And we are, what are we out? 54 days out. Is that what I said? 54 days out. It's not on the slide. You just have to trust me. 54 days out. Yeah, we're going to be racing some chonks there. Yeah. Uh, what are we going to be going through in this little presentation here? Well, we'll be talking about the schedule. We'll be going through who's won and what races are coming up and when those races are going to be. We'll take a look at the points. Who's got all the points right now? Uh, who's in the lead? And what the power rankings look like. My power rankings. This isn't Trust the Profits power rankings, although I am one of the profits that you will trust. Um... Yeah, I'll be going through my power rankings, telling you who I like and why, and finish times. Um, Just some observations we're making about finish times last year, possibly projecting forward to this year. I don't think this had any bearing on 2022. I don't think you could be extrapolating the same data and coming to the same conclusions. But it's an interesting thing to look at uh, that I pulled out by looking at some finish times of the prep races and comparing it to uh, what we see in terms of performance. Let's go ahead and get started here. just love that picture. I know El Hombre is going to love that picture, too, because he just loves cats. Kitten's Joy, his favorite horse. If you see him on Twitter, just send him pictures of Kitten's Joy and put a whole bunch of heart emojis on there. He's going to love it. Anyway, look at the race schedule. This is pretty much what we started with the the Tour de Force. If you look at that race schedule, what do you see? Not a whole lot of repeats. In fact, I would say that number's pretty much zero. Um, yeah, LeCompte, got Track Phantom, Southwest, Mystic Dan, Hades, and Holy Bull. Nysos, put a line through him because he's not running the Kentucky Derby. The Robert Lewis, the Withers, Uncle Heavy won that race. No more time at the Sam F. Davis. Thought he was going to repeat potentially at the Tampa Bay, Down, uh, Tampa Bay Derby. Hmm. Uh, but Domestic Product edged him out in that one. Sierra Leone. Uh, winner of the Risen Star Stronghold Sunland Derby could be the only horse that comes out of California. It looks like Bob Baffert's doing anything he can to gobble up all the points so no horses come out of California. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a story for another time. Or maybe it's a story for this time. We'll see where this goes. Timberlake. Um, oh, come on. Make me do it. I'm bringing sexy back. Yeah. Timberlake. Yes, winner of the Rebel Stakes. Gotham, Deterministic, Dornock, winner of the Spartan, Fountain of Youth, Imagination, winner of the Spartan, San Felipe, uh, San Felipe, and yes, as I said before, Domestic Product, winner of the Tampa Bay Downs. No repeats here. A lot of horses spreading it out, no horse really stepping up and saying, hey, this is mine, going to knock out a couple of these in a row. Track Phantom looked like he had potential there. Um, Dornock, uh, yeah, there's a couple horses on here that you you think maybe they'll step forward. Fierceness, I mean, Fierceness we thought would come from BC Juvenile, end up winning the Holy Bull, maybe move on to Florida Derby and knock that out as well, but third place finish to Hades in the Holy Bull. So there's been a lot of surprises along the way. There's no, there's no set favorite for the Kentucky Derby of all the horses that are eligible for the Kentucky Derby. And what do we have coming up? So this week... As I'm recording this now, um, early evening on March 11th, in a couple weeks we got the Louisiana Derby coming up at Fairgrounds, Jeff Ruby Stakes at Turfway, same day, and then we got Florida Derby and Arkansas Derby on the same day. That's going to be a hell of a day. Uh, also, you got the UA Derby on top of that. Wood Memorial, Santa Anita, and Bluegrass all on 4 6, that is April 6. And then on the 13th of April, you got the Lexington. As the last stakes race before we gear up for the Kentucky Derby on May 4th. Let's move on, guys. Let's keep it rolling. What do we got next here? Let's take a look at the point standing. So Timberlake. Oh, it's worth it one more time. If I wrote you a symphony. Mm, I like I like sexy back better, to be honest with you. Uh, Dornak really sitting on top right now, sitting on top of the world with 66 points. Is he the best horse out there? 
Um, depends who you talk to. Doorknock right underneath him, uh, along with domestic product at 60. Domestic product winner of the Tampa Bay Derby, as we just talked about. Sierra Leone track phantom, that is your top five. Deterministic rounding it out at six with no more time. Fierceness, El Grande, oh, and common defense. Um, Stronghold hit with 25 points, sitting there at 11th. Catching freedom, just a touch. I barely remember where just a touch came from. Uh, Mystic Dan coming in there. Hades, Uncle Heavy, Encino locked. Liberal Arts and McVeigh. Those are the top 20 right now. Uh, but really, you, you take a look. It's really no more time and up, I would say. 7 and up. 45 to 66. Those are the ones that are the really big leaders. The others are kind of on the edge right now, especially these big races with bigger points coming up. We'll be curious to see what happens next. Uh, in terms of power rankings, um, I took Locked off. Um, yeah, I was tracking horses off the Derby Trail. Locked, I am adding to that list. I apologize, you do not have that list in front of me right now. Uh, I was showing it on, on previous shows, and um, yeah, maybe a good thing for me to hit it up next time. At the top of my list, I'm going to put Track Phantom and Fierceness. Um, I'll show you why in a little bit, but I think their running styles, honestly, are, are going to be conducive to the Derby. Uh, Track Phantom, going to get out in front, going to be a horse that hopefully holds that lead, doesn't get... I mean, that's the risk of the Derby, is a horse gets a ton of pressure and then yields it, but um, I do think Track Phantom is one of those horses that, like an epicenter, I know he didn't win, but like an epicenter of years past, can can hold on for that those extra couple of furlongs at the end. Fierceness, um, I'll show you why I like Fierceness in a second. I think he ran one of the best races that we've had up to this point, and then turned around and ran possibly one of the worst races after that. Uh, Sierra Leone, the closer, the biggest closer in in the in the power rankings list right now, in my opinion. I know a lot of you will agree with me. A lot of people are fighting for Sierra Leone. I'm not fighting against you. You're just putting him a little bit higher than I had him before, but I have moved him up. You gotta. He's won the races. Doorknock right below him. Hades. I could possibly be possibly push down Hades a little bit lower, but I want to see a little bit more from him. I think uh, I think I might get it too. No more time. Stronghold. Like I said, the only horse possibly coming in from California, and I think it's a good one. I think Stronghold is pretty strong. Domestic product. Recent winner of the Tampa Bay Derby, Mystic Dan. Mystic Dan, been up here for me, been down here for me, and then back up here, and now I just got to put him in the middle until I see something else. Timberlake with the most points right now, but I am not completely sold on Timberlake. Deterministic, the Clement horse, um, coming out at 11, catching freedom. Just Steel, the horse that always seems to find his way to place or show, except his last race when he came in 7th. The Wine Steward, by the way, the Wine Steward, looks like he might be running in Lexington now, um, possibly. Got him on the list. It was easy to drop him off, but he is training again. He's putting up good numbers, uh, going through some solid workouts. So the Wine Steward, I'd love to keep him on my list, and then rounding out with Liberal Arts. I'm sure some of you are going to disagree with me in the comments section, and I can't wait for it. By the way, for those of you playing Game of Silks, and congratulations if you are, because it is a, a hell of a fun ride, um, you are on the right side there. Yes, we've got the owners for Game of Silks right here. Season 2 is uh, is underway for Game of Silks owners. And, uh, yeah, can't wait. Okay. Ah! Spoiler alert. Okay. So, I was talking to you earlier about prep finish times. Yes. And, um, yeah, there was supposed to be an animation here, but I'll just get right down to it. So, in looking up the 2023 prep finish times, this is something I was tracking at the end of last year. I kind of completed it out because I wanted to see what it would look like in comparison to where the Kentucky Derby landed. Hmm. And I wanted to take a look and see, okay, how can I apply that to 2024? Interesting thing to note. So, yes, I've got the, the times for some of the prep races above. It's covered up by Mage, Two Fills, Angel of Empire right there. Those are the eight and a half for long. You can see the the, uh, the second to the right most column there. But really focus on the nine for long races. You got the Florida Derby, the Jeff Ruby, Santa Anita Bluegrass, Arkansas Derby, Wood Memorial, Risen Star, Withers, Louisiana Derby, right? So if you take a look at those times, I've got this sorted in finish time here. So we cross out a uh, practical move. Strong horse, had a great time. Cross him out, though, because he didn't run. Same thing with Forte. He didn't run. Um, 
they had two of the top three times and then two fills with sandwich in between them and then you have mage angel of empire so again you take those five you cross out the two that scratch two fills mage angel of empire box that up what do you have one two three kentucky derby again purely an observation can't do this every year obviously rich strike was not going to pass this test uh two years ago right um but last year, interesting thing to look at here in order to determine, you know, different ways to bet uh, who, who will project out well. Obviously, stretching out to those longer distances, running times. I know a lot of people are going to say, hey, different tracks, different speeds. I agree. That's why I have the difference to the record here to normalize it. Um, but I found that that didn't really correlate to anything as interesting as looking at the pure race times. Um so yeah, that's we don't have as many nine furlong races right now. I'm looking purely at eight and a half furlongs on this page, and then the next page we'll look at nine and a half. But it's interesting to note here, fierceness at the top, one of the best times so far at nine furlongs, uh, 141.9 in the BC Juvenile. Muth and locked right behind him, so I had to make some adjustments on their times based on lengths behind and estimations. A stronghold, though. That one kind of came as a shock to me, Stronghold. Not only is his uh, difference to the record holding up pretty well here, but his time in general, 142.64, also looks really good. No more time. Where did that come from? No more time at the Sam F. Davis. Doorknock, Mystic Dan, Timberlake a little bit lower, right? Um, but if you really look at this list and you look at Fierceness and you, you go to the Holy Bull, you'll see he also has one of the worst times. So hard to judge here, but this is why I still have Fierceness high on my list. Um, track Phantom at the Lecompte. <laughs> I know you're going to... Hey, Formula, why are you talking on both sides of your mouth? I still like Track Phantom. I, I think there's some there's going to be something there. I want to see him really drill out at a, a nine furlong pace and see how, how he comes there. That's why I still got him at the top of my list. And yes, to, to wrap this up here, so far, not a lot to say. We got the Risen Star, we got the Withers. Yeah, I guess I could have pulled in um, some of the Aqueduct races, but really, let's just wait and see. We're, we're looking ahead here at the nine furlong races that we're going to be seeing in the months of April and March, leading into that big one in May. Right now, Sierra Leone, Track Phantom, Catching Freedom, Uncle Heavy, El Grande, O. Oh. Well, 152 in the 152s and 153s. Not looking so bad, but, you know, if we if we scroll back up here, where do we want to see them at? Yeah, we got a 148 for Practical Move, 149s here for Mage, two fills, Angel of Empire, also 149. That is your top three. So just some things to look out for. Whew. There you have it. Yeah, let's let's exit out of this. That's what I got for now. Just taking a look kind of at the halfway point here in the 2024 prep races. What do you guys see out there? Who do you like? Has this been a good year? I know a lot of you are going to hate this because Baffert's not in it this year. Nysos isn't able to run. Curious to see what happens in Santa Anita, see if he gobbles up all the points that they're expecting him to and uh, how he's, his numbers are going to rank compared to all the horses that are eligible. But uh, anyway, hit us up in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. And nice seeing you.